Now that we've had the opportunity to look into moving and manipulating objects within RealFlow, now we can start to look at some of the actual dynamic functions and capabilities of the software itself. So let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. And if you recall, I said earlier that pretty much all of these different functions that we have available to us pretty much all relate in some way or another to either uh, particle simulations or uh, soft and rigid body dynamics. So within each one of these different uh, little tabs, we've got a several functions to choose from. We have your emitters, which is what are actually going to emit particles within RealFlow. And we have quite a few to choose from, which we'll have a chance to talk about. You have real waves, which can actually simulate realistic oceans within RealFlow. You have demons, or daemons, however you choose to pronounce it. Um, these are what you would t probably refer to as forces in a lot of other programs. Uh, things like gravity, um, drag forces, uh, wind. These are all found underneath the demons list. You have your geometry, which is uh, where you can actually import geometry and import objects from other programs. You have constraints, which can relate to soft and rigid body dynamics. And then you have meshes, where you can actually uh, build meshes over your particle simulations. So let's go ahead and first of all, just talk about emitters. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just drop a circle emitter. And if you want to, at any time, you could rename any of these by just simply selecting it. And then, um, after it's been selected, just click on it one more time, and that'll let you rename it. So, if I wanted to rename this, pretty much anything I wanted to, now it's been renamed Test Circle. And you can also see now in this pull-down menu that it's been renamed test circle as well. So before we start to actually talk about the simulation itself, let's talk about a few of these attributes that can actually be found within pretty much all of these different emitters. You have resolution, density, internal and external pressure, and viscosity. These are really the attributes that really, really control the way that these different particles behave. You have, first of all, your resolution which that is pretty much going to define how many particles are going to be emitted. So by default, it's going to be set to 1. Now this resolution and these number of particles that are going to be emitted are pretty heavily determined by the overall size of your emitter. So an emitter with a size of default is going to emit a lot fewer particles at a 1 number 1 resolution than if you scale it up it'll all of a sudden start emitting a lot more particles. And we'll start to uh, probably see that here in a couple of later lessons. So again, resolution really just kind of defines how many particles are going to be emitted from this particular object. You have your density, which is going to pretty much define the mass or the weight of your particles. So heavier number means your particles are going to be quite a bit heavier. Your internal and external pressure uh, those can define whether or not your uh, particle stream will either expand under, ex under its internal pressure or start to collapse under its external pressure. So whether you want to have something that expands um, sort of in an irregular sort of spurting fashion, you'd probably want to actually increase the internal pressure to make those particles spread out as they're being emitted. If you wanted them to collapse in on themselves as they're being emitted, you could start to increase this external pressure. The viscosity is going to define the thickness of your particles. So um, your viscosity can determine whether or not you're going to have something that's sort of a syrupy consistency, or whether or not it's going to be something really thin, kind of like a water consistency. So these uh, different attributes really have a lot of impact over the overall look of your simulation. So let's first of all take a look at um, just how to get your particle simulations going within RealFlow. Now you'll notice that if I go ahead and just hit play, nothing happens. Okay, why is that? Why is nothing happening? Well, RealFlow really more or less has what you could think of as two timelines. One for animation and then one for dynamic simulations. So if I go ahead and rewind this, what we need to do is actually preview this through more or less the dynamic timeline. 
Now you can do that by pressing this action button. So if I press action, now you can see it's moving through the timeline, but now I can actually see my particles. So if I want to stop this at any time, I can just hit action again, and that'll go ahead and stop my simulation. So here's the particles that have been emitted out. Now when I rewind this, I'm going to hit a new problem. When I rewind it, my particles did not disappear. So what's going to happen? If I hit action again, it's just going to pick up from where it left off. If I hit action again, it stops. But if I scroll way forward, again, it just stops. Okay, so how can I get these particles to just disappear, to go back to where they were at frame zero? The way that we need to do that is with this reset button. So we reset, and it's going to say, hey, look, all this particle data is going to be reset. Are you sure that you really want to reset it? Yes, we do. So now all my particles have been taken back to frame zero. So if I hit action again, now they start over. So this is the workflow that you're really going to have to utilize within RealFlow. You'll hit action to simulate your particles. And then when you're done and decide you want to start over again, just hit reset. I would probably highly recommend using the, the uh, keyboard shortcuts, which are A for action. So if I hit A, that'll go ahead and start my simulation. If I hit A again, that will go ahead and stop it. The shortcut for reset is control A. So control A and just yes. So pretty efficient workflow once you get used to it. So A, A again to stop it, and then control A to reset. So that's the kind of the basic gist of how um, you can actually get your dynamic simulations to work within RealFlow. So in the next lesson, we'll start to take a look at some more advanced features of these dynamic simulations that you can have within RealFlow.